Hello, my name is Ann Corby and I live in Kennebunkport. I was very excited this morning when I got up and thought about coming to the library. I haven't been inside the library in a very long time. I miss coming in and seeing the books and picking out something to read and of course we can still get books from the library, um, but it's not the same as coming in. Um, I miss coming in for movie nights and for my book group that meets once a month. We all read the same book and then we talk about it. Um, I'm sure you miss coming in for story hour and getting books as well. So today I am going to read The Pokey Little Puppy's First Christmas. Our family actually voted on this book. My daughters and grandchildren picked it out. This is the book that I used to read to my children and then to my grandchildren. Um, so it's very old, um, but it's well loved. The Pokey Little Puppy was published by Golden Press, which makes all the little golden books. And I think most of us know the golden books and love them. Um, and we thank them for letting us use their book today um, to read to all of you. The Pokey Little Puppy's First Christmas was written by Adelaide Hall, H-O-L-L, -L, not Hall, Hall, and it was illustrated by Florence Sarah Winship. I love that name, Florence Sarah Winship. It has a little melody to it. So here is the front page with the author, the illustrator, and the publisher, and the pi pictures of the five little puppies. The Pokey Little Puppy's First Christmas. One winter morning, five little puppies tumbled out of bed and ran to the window. The whole world was white and sparkling. The trees were wearing silver lace and there were little white caps on the fence posts. Snow, cried the puppies happily. Let's go play in the snow. Very well, said their mother, but remember, don't sneak away under the fence and don't go running off up the hill. We won't, they agreed. I don't know if you can see the lace on the trees and the snow caps on the fence and here are some paw prints from the puppies in the snow. Get a good look at that. But when their mother was busy with her work, one puppy spoke up. Our mother said we couldn't go under the fence. But she didn't say we couldn't go over the fence. Another puppy spoke up. She said we couldn't go up the hill. But she didn't say we couldn't go down the hill. Let's go, they shouted. Wait for me, called the pokey little puppy as he struggled through the snowdrifts. The four lively little puppies ran and ran until they came to a house at the bottom of the hill. They tiptoed to a window and peeked in. I wonder what they'll see in the house. Oh, look, whispered the first little puppy, a tree, not growing in the woods, but growing right inside the house. And see the beautiful fruit on its branches, whispered the second little puppy, not apples or peaches or pears, but sparkly fruit, all shapes and sizes. And a star, whispered the third little puppy, not shining in the sky, but shining at the very tip top of the tree. How pretty, whispered the fourth little puppy. Just then, they heard someone coming. They turned and raced back up the hill as fast as the wind. Halfway up, they met the pokey little puppy coming down. Hurry home, they called to him, and we'll tell you about the wonderful things we saw. Their friend Crow was perched on the fence, waiting for them. Caw, caw, he said. I can tell you about the wonderful things you saw. I fly everywhere. I know everything that's going on in the world. 
The five little puppies listened with shining eyes while Crow told them a marvelous story. He told them about Christmas trees and Christmas gifts. He told them about a jolly fat man in a red suit who comes on Christmas Eve. There is the pretty tree with the shiny fruit on it and there is friend Crow sitting on the fence post. That night, they snuggled under the covers. The puppies made exciting plans. Let's have Christmas. We'll write a letter to Santa Claus and we'll go to the woods and find a Christmas tree. But the next morning, their mother said crossly, I saw muddy paw prints on the top of the fence and I saw puppy paw marks in the snow. And they were going all the way down the hill. The five little puppies hung their heads. Now remember, warned their mother, don't go under the fence, over the fence, don't go up the hill or down the hill. We won't, they agreed. They look a little sorry there or at least a little sad. But when their mother was busy with her work, one puppy spoke up. Our mother didn't say we couldn't go through the fence. And I know a little place just right to squeeze through. Another puppy spoke up. Our mother didn't say we couldn't go across the hill, and that's the way to the woods. Let's go, they shouted. Wait for me, called the pokey little puppy as he struggled to squeeze through the fence. The four lively little puppies soon reached the woods. They scurried about looking for treasures. They found a lovely bushy green branch from a pine tree. They found hickory nuts, acorns, and bright red berries. They found thistle, milkweed fluff, hedge apples, and seed pods, and they found cones, all shapes and sizes. They were collecting their treasures, ready to start home, when the pokey little puppy came bouncing up. I may be pokey, but I'm a good finder, he said. He held up a piece of shiny silver paper. I'm going to make a star for the top of the tree, he told them. I don't know if you can see his shiny paper right there. And all the pine cones and seed pods. That evening, the puppies hid their treasures under a bush. Then they wrote a letter to Santa Claus and put it up on the fence. Dear Santa, please bring us warm sweaters, rubber balls, and lots more toys. The five little puppies. When they were all snug and cozy in their beds, the pokey little puppy said happily, tomorrow is Christmas Eve, and that's when Santa Claus comes. Mm. He's thinking of Santa Claus up here as he's tucking under his blanket. But the next morning, they found a sign on the fence right beside their letter to Santa. And it said, Santa Claus brings presents only to good little puppies who mind their mothers. Oh dear, they all said at once. Maybe Santa Claus won't come at all. They sat down to talk about being good. Each little puppy had something to say. Being good means minding our mother and eating all our dinner and keeping our paws and noses clean and going to bed on time and not running off and leaving me behind, added the pokey little puppy. Crow flew down to join them. Being good also means making others happy, he told them. 
Christmas isn't just getting, it's giving too. The pokey little puppy had an idea. Let's give a party for our friends, he said. Then he had another idea. But if we have to be good and stay home all day, who will invite them? I will, said Crow. I go everywhere and see everybody. And off he flew with a loud caw. All that day, the puppies stayed close to home and were very, very good. That evening, they snuggled down happily when their mother tucked them into their bed. But when she was fast asleep, they got up quietly. They brought out the bushy pine branch and trimmed it with all the lovely treasures from the woods. Then they tiptoed back to bed, all but pokey little puppy. He had one more thing to do. He wrote on the letter to Santa, P.S. Please bring something for our mother and for our friends, too. Early the next morning, for the very first time in his life, the pokey little puppy was up ahead of everybody else. Merry Christmas, he called excitedly. All the puppies tumbled out of bed and ran to the tree. Santa did come, they called to their mother. Come see our presents. Caw, caw, crow, crow greeted them as he flapped down and perched on a branch of a nearby tree. Brown Sparrow flew down with a happy chirp to perch beside him. Up scurried Gray Squirrel, up hopped Rabbit. It was a wonderful party and there were presents for everyone. There were juicy bones and rubber balls and warm sweaters for the puppies. There were hickory nuts and acorns for Squirrel. There were weed seeds and juicy berries for Sparrow. For Rabbit, there were lacy carrot tops and crispy lettuce leaves. For Crow, there were sprigs of wheat and kernels of golden corn. And for the puppy's mother, there was a beautiful sweater and a lovely necklace of red berries. After she admired her presence, their mother said, now I have something special for my five little puppies. Something to help me keep track of them. And around each puppy's neck, she fastened a bright red ribbon and a tiny jingle bell. Here's the back cover and the puppies are bringing the presents for their mother. It looks like her sweater. It says for mother on it. And this box, that might be the necklace, don't you think? I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season.